we're at what's cooking at the Burbeck Tavern in uh, Leytonstone in East London, and we're, it's nice to have with us the Black Twig Pickers from the USI. And guys, would you first of all introduce yourselves to us, please? Um, Nathan Bowles. I play banjo and percussion. Mike Angloff, fiddle. And he plays banjo and sings as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm Isaac Howell. I play guitar and harmonica. Right. And sing a wee bit. Right. Okay. Okay. So, which part of the states do you come from? Uh, okay. Well, Mike and I live in the southwestern tip of Virginia. Um, Isaac now lives across the border in West Virginia, about an hour and forty-five minute drive from approximately where Mike and I live. Right. Um, it's all in the mountain, in the Appalachian mountain chain. Right. So you're real Appalachian mountain musicians, then, are you? The real well, thing. We live, we live there and we play the music, so I guess yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay, well, um, you made this really good album last year, the, the, the Black Twig, because it's called Eromto Special, which uh, we, we were really knocked out with. Especially the first track, I think, it was, it was Don't Drink, drink no, Nothing But Corn. Don't yes. Drink Nothing. We absolutely loved, we played and played and played that track. Oh, nice. So, um, for English folks, I wonder if you could give us a kind of description of your music in general. Well, it's, it's the uh, traditional music of uh, that part of the world. It's, uh, it's based on the fiddle and the banjo. Um, and uh, it was a lot of the songs uh, ultimately come from over here. You know, there's a lot of uh, English and Irish and Scottish music that uh, got mixed around in the United States and, and turned into this old time sound. And, and we've particularly focused on tunes that have a long history in the communities right around us. So how did you sort of come across the music? Did you learn that from, from, from a very young age? Have you kind of grown up with it, so to speak? No, I haven't. I, I heard it, um, I mean, I was around uh, various related forms. I, mean, I grew up playing in churches, and, and the church music was kind of, a, kind of related to it, but it's, it's definitely not this fiddle and banjo music. But just when I heard it, I loved it so much, I wanted to know about it, and, and uh, you know, began to uh, pursue uh, older fiddlers and uh, attempt to uh, learn from them. Yeah, I know there's a, there's a lot of background on the music on the sleeve notes of this album, yeah. which I read in some depth. What about you two guys? How did you get into this music? Um, well, you should go first chronologically. So you met Mike probably 12 years ago or something? Yeah, I grew up in a state called Alabama in the Deep South, but, you know, my family was not particularly musical and I wasn't raised on fiddle and banjo music, but was interested as soon as I heard it. And uh, Mike and I worked together at a newspaper in Southwest Virginia in the late 90s and started playing together then. Uh, yeah, I, my mom was very musical and I grew up playing piano and uh, percussion, drums and stuff. Um, and I was, I had a pretty wide ranging taste I think from a pretty young age. And then I heard, I guess I, I don't know, I was introduced to you Maybe 2005 or six or something, something like that. Something yeah. like that. Um, and <clears throat> I'd heard the previous Twigs lineup and really just caught my ear in a way and made me really want to learn more about it. And I was already sort of friends with Mike at that point, so I learned more about it through him and then just started playing kind of informally. Right. And then the the lineup sort of congealed or <laughs> is that the right word or yeah one one fellow left and you go <clears throat> yeah so yeah because the black twig pickers goes back a fair while you made quite a few albums can you give us some of the background and a little bit of the history yeah um as isaac was saying we met in uh i guess 99 and uh isaac and i and another fellow started playing together as the black twigs and, and um the name came from uh, this other fellow ralph barrier um who's an author now who's written a book about, um, about a lot of old time and bluegrass music but uh, he grew up in an orchard down the North Carolina line, and the black twig apple was one of the uh, apple varieties they grew there. So we took that as our name. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we put out a, a few albums over the years, and, and uh, you know, just kind of kept at it. And, and uh, I think we really, I think if you listen to the albums, you can hear us learning the music as we go. You know, it's, yeah. it's really quite yeah, literally. Very yes. <laughs> and I do <laughs> on that track in the course of it. Have you got a new record out at the moment? Have you got a new record out or in, in preparation? <clears throat> Uh, well, we got a lot of stuff going on uh, studio-wise. I mean, this feels pretty new to us, but we have a lot of we all we have a a seven-inch out for just for this tour that right. we're on right now. We and we have several upcoming things. We've recorded a new album that'll be out 
I think in early 2013, and a 10 inch record. Or a 12 inch. That, a 12 inch that will be out uh, in the summer. Yeah, in summer. I think in July. Yeah. Like a 12 inch 45. Well, on, two, on vinyl, yeah. Mm -hmm. So vinyl. like two yeah. side long, about 12 minute. Extended, sort of extended dance songs. kind of wow. flat footing music with a big, they're like with the, a big group yeah so with a big group with, uh, and, and with dancers and mics on the feet and oh wow yeah so yeah. that's extended dance piece we've been getting better and better and having more and more fun playing for dancers yeah. we do that once a month and it's dance music and we love rhythm and it's also just fun to play for dancers and yeah. Yeah. so what here in North London where we are, we've, the, the main kind of live music we've got is in pubs and we've got right. lots of blues bands and things like that. Yeah. There's the occasional pay on door venue but it's all the, it's the type of place you're, you're at tonight. Mm -hmm. This is probably better than a lot of them because it specialises in American roots music. Can right. you kind of tell us what the local scene is like back home? Well there's a lot of people, there's a, a community of, of old time players which yeah. is the, one of the main differences of say living in some other place is that we there are these festivals every summer we go camp at and you meet dozens of other players you play all night long and just keeps it all very alive and that, that's a, a great thing that happens every year so that's not a venue so much but we play we you play on stage you compete on stage yeah. uh, at these uh, at these we also play like bar gigs yeah we play pub, and we play pubs and um you know, clubs every now parties. and then if we're traveling, par house parties. Community events. Community, yeah, right, community kind of events, so. So how popular is this music in, in America, say, compared to, say, rock music at a, a, a local level, you know, in mm. bars and things? Oh, yeah, on a local level, I mean, I, you know, like Isaac was saying, there's a fair amount of, obviously, <clears throat> the people, and there's many people in the area who play this kind of music, obviously they enjoy it, but there's also an audience that I think is a little more open to it. Um, I mean, it's a little different than sort of the more popular bluegrass you're going to be hearing on internet radio or in sort of mass media. And so, but I, I still think there's enough crossover where the general public seem, in our area seems to at least be, you know, up to listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So Rock I mean, music's more popular. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, yeah. That was, so that was my way of. But the, the, the traditional music in America seems to be very strong. I mean, we, we're seeing endless no, musicians coming over yeah. and bringing this music <laughs> over. Seems to be holding fast against all odds, you know, which is... Yeah, I think... Um, Do you think young people are getting kind of saturated with the kind of stuff they're hearing on, on the mainstream radio and that, and going back to the older stuff? Yes. Well, some of them are. I mean, some, very definitely. Yeah, I mean, that could turn into a whole other conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think information is disseminated in such a way now that yeah. the whole field of music is open for kids to explore. I mean, it was open for, you know, when I came to college in 2001, the, the internet was available to me and I could just discover all this kind of stuff and then go yeah. out and see shows in Blacksburg at houses and just be, you know, blown away by the variety of stuff going on. I, mean, it, yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, so much radio totally blows. I mean, it's, like, yeah. it's so hard to find good stuff. I mean, kids are, people of all ages are just trying to find other venues to find creative music these days, so. Do you ever get kids coming up to you and saying, wow, I've never heard music like that before. What is it? Does that ever happen to you? Uh, not really locally. Yeah, no, locally they know what it is. Locally, but, yeah. Um, but no, we get, we get on this tour this week, we've had people come up to us and say, you know, this is a, an unexpected, uh, thing for me. I wandered in and heard this and you know. Well I get, I've got a rhythm and blues band and we mm -hmm. play kind of, I suppose the, the, the sound you would put is closest to the Rolling Stones mm -hmm. and of course they were in their high, their real heyday a long time ago. Oh yeah we're big Stones fans. Yeah, yeah. Certain era, we sometimes sure. play, you know, we play a gig and the young kids who really only heard what's on the radio come up to us and say, well that is fantastic, where does that music come from, you know. Yeah. So we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of re educating in a way aren't we I think. Yeah. All of us. It's true. Well yeah. you try, I mean you just try to spread what you love, you know, you try to spread what you're passionate about right? yeah. or what you think, the kind of music you think that has values that are meaningful and lasting. Uh, I think old time represents that for us in different ways, I think, probably for each of us. But, yeah. Uh, what, what, what do you play in your... Uh, me, I'm guitar and ukulele and I've, I've actually got an instrument that's based on a, on a dulcimer. 
yeah. except you can play semitones on it, so you can play minor, minor, minor. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, dulcimer is interesting. It <clears throat> just started messing around. With started kind of messing around with one that my girlfriend got, and it's, it's sort of like, yeah, the no semi. It's the fretting is like if you're trying yeah. to. We've got all the in-between frets on this one, and it's, it's tuned modally, so I can play kind of that bluesy minor key stuff. It's yeah. great. It really opens people's eyes when they see it. That's right. really cool. Because yeah. it, it's, it's deeper than a dulcimer. It's a different shape, but it's related. You know, people yeah. say, what is that instrument called? And we say, well, it actually hasn't got a name. You know, someone <laughs> just made it, and we bought oh, it. Oh, I see. So it's so it hasn't got a name. Dulcimer. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. And it's got a phenomenal sound. Yeah. Nice. It's got a great amplification system in it, so if we, we plug it into the PA system, yeah, yeah. you get this beautiful, almost wall of acoustic sound, it's fantastic. Nice. Oh, I'd love to show it to you sometime. So talking about instruments and on the technical note, I wonder if you could, could you tell us a bit about the fiddle? What sort of tunings do you play in? Oh, um, let's see. Well, you do play in a lot of different tunings yeah. in this sort of music. Um, for it, and usually that's determined by the key the song is in. So, yeah. you know, you might use your standard E, A, D, G yeah. fiddle tuning um, for songs in the key of G. Possibly this key of C, but when you move over to the key of D, which is what I have this set up for right now, you're going to change it so that it's E A D A. Move that one string over. Could you play us a little chord on it, just so I can hear that? I'm sure. fascinated by that. Sure. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And do you change fiddles during the gig, or do you do you, do you, do you tune? Um. Both. I I, uh, I usually have two fiddles with me just to cut down the number of retunings. Right. They're oh. still retuning, but it cuts down significantly to have two. Yeah. yeah so. He's always retuning. I do some retuning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah everyone's tuning. You'll, 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 well, I notice in the notes to here, there's all sorts of different tunings listed. Well, you'll see it tonight. We're <laughs> You're giving us the chance to prep you now for lots of <laughs> yeah. tuning between songs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I uh, hope you have a great tour England Europe. hope you get a chance to drink plenty of this uh, real ale. Yes, okay. we're getting as much we, as we, we can. We've been doing a fair amount of that. And, uh, <laughs> we wish you all the That's best. That's why he thank looks you. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you so cheers, much. Cheers, cheers, and right. thank you. Cheers. <laughs> thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. Appreciate right. it. Take care. We'll see you downstairs then. Yeah, yeah. And these guys have got... Um, I tell you what, who brings out cassettes these days? They've got cassettes, lovely big slabs of vinyl, they've got some CDs, you, um, people are still buying CDs, but buy cassettes, buy vinyl, they've got seven inches as well. I wait four years, five years ago, the first time we had Charlie Parr, it was at the, uh, it was the Leatherstone ex servicemen's Club. These guys were supposed to be playing, you guys probably don't remember actually, you were in the same building, and then you had the council. Fantastic, Mr. Charlie Parr. So it's been a long time getting them here, so it has. So, all the way from Virginia, West Virginia, big round of applause, the Black Twig Pickers.
uh, True Tales set the song here. It's, uh, sad events in uh, my neighborhood of Southwest Virginia in a little place called Arlanto. It was, uh, what, March of 2003, I think. We had uh, left home that morning and a heavy rainstorm to go down to uh, North Carolina and play on a radio station. Yeah. About midday, we finished up with that, and we're headed back, and we find that we can't get home because the roads are all flooded. And it took uh, many, many hours to, to wind around the flooding and get back home, but the song is about uh, what was going on in the meantime. So this is the River's Flooded and Robin's Ground. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
now, yes.
I've never used it before. 
and have the bugger the wrong way around. See your face. Absolutely no application at all. Fantastic, fantastic, absolute pleasure. Please.